Hey guys, the United States is a nation of immigrants, but in a way, the Americas are continents of immigrants. And when I say that, it's because in the beginning of time, uh, there were no people. <laughs> Even once there were people, in the beginning, after people originally came into being, there were no people in this hemisphere. So an easy question to ask is, how did people get to the Americas? What was their journey? How did they immigrate here? Now, I understand that we're not starting any of our study thousands of years ago, but it, it bears a little bit of discussion and thought because the story is kind of fun and interesting, and it has a strange connection to the great state of Texas. The idea that there was a landmass that once connected Asia and North America is an old one. The first account of the Bering Land Bridge is found in 1590 when a Spanish missionary named Acosta was writing about how people simply walked from what is Siberia into what is Alaska. And that's how they got here to the Americas. So by the 1930s, this Bering Land Bridge idea had some evidence that kind of went with it. Um, how was that? Well, in Clovis, New Mexico, you had archaeologists uncover a cache of weapons. And these weapons had um, shapes that coincided with the wounds in the bones of prehistoric animals. And so the idea was, yes, indeed, people followed woolly mammoths across this giant Bering Land Bridge, and then they kept following the animals as they migrated south, and um, they ended up in New Mexico, in Clovis. And these people were called the Clovis peoples. And we were able to carbon date things back 12, 13,000 years. And so, boom, that's when the people first got here. In 1968, a construction worker who was engaged in a job on a private ranch owned by the Ansick family finds a baby that was buried with Clovis people tools. This baby was over 12,000 years old and this baby is going to help further confirm the theory that this Bering land bridge was how people moved from Siberia into the Americas. First, his DNA shows that he had Siberian origin, right? Also, he's going to be determined to be an ancestor of Native Americans based on their DNA, Native Americans who live today. Ansic I was reburied by the Ansic family and Native American tribes in Montana in 2014. Now Texas finally gets into our story. There were some archeologists who worked with the Texas Department of Public Transportation who were surveying a road at, out in Cedar Park. They were building the Ranch to Market Road 1431. And as they were doing their work, they come across this woman who was, you know, 10 to 13,000 years old. She was not a Neanderthal, but Cedar Park is very close to Leander. So what do they do? They dub her the Leanderthal Lady. And once more, we have a person who dates back to where we think the Clovis people should be. So Leanderthal Lady is also going to be nicknamed Leanne because, you know, everyone deserves a name. And she was 18 to 30 years old when she died, only 5'3", so fairly diminutive. And she resides today in uh, the J.J. Pickle Research Campus of the University of Texas, which is not right downtown in Austin, but south of the domain. So we're feeling pretty good about these Clovis peoples, right? They're the first peoples, they're the original immigrants, they're the OGs, <laughs> so to speak. But, um, well, then there's kind of a monkey wrench thrown into this science thing. In the 1970s, there was a professor from Vanderbilt University who was working in Chile, which is in South America. And he uncovers some evidence that, you know, human beings had actually been in the Americas longer and perhaps before the Bering Land Bridge could have existed during a particular ice age. So uh, that's kind of strange. 
Now, he was doing his excavations in the 70s. I told you that Leanderthal Lady is discovered in the early 80s. So I want you to know that scientists don't automatically accept this guy's findings. They're like, no, we've got our theory. We're holding on to it, man. You faked it. You fixed the evidence. You planted stuff. These artifacts aren't even real. Well, by 1997, they determined that indeed they were real. And, um, you know, we've got to start thinking a little bit more outside of the box because if people had been living in Chile over 14,000 years ago, well, that's, that's how they get there. And then, and then Texas comes back again. There's a guy named uh, Dr. Michael Waters from Texas A&M who discovers another site uh, near us. In fact, it may be the oldest site that's been proven to have had inhabitants um, maybe as long ago as 16,000 years. Where was this? Uh, this was by Buttermilk Creek in Bell County, which is home to Colleen and Fort Hood. This is the problem. The further back you go, the further away you get from the ice age that was necessary for the Bering Land Bridge to be accessible. If we're going back 15,000 plus years, there's a thought that ice was either impassable or ice didn't exist to the right level and the ocean covered the land one way or the other. So if you go back this far, we have to come up with a different way for people to have originally arrived in the Americas because the Bering Land Bridge theory doesn't hold water, so to speak. So why am I telling you about all of this? We aren't really engaged with archeology span or anthropology or genealogy or uh, carbon dating or DNA or anything like that in this particular history course, even though all of those things play into the discipline of history. Um, well, it's for a few reasons. Number one, I think it's super cool <laughs> that we live so close to an excavation site that has proven life in the Americas. It, it, it's such an early period that kind of blew out of the water some of our understanding of how people first got here. Uh, that doesn't mean that the Bering Land Bridge, by the way, isn't something that existed, wasn't a way that the Clovis peoples came across and then got down into uh, what is today the Southwest and then further down into South America. It's just people were coming other ways too. And we just, we, we don't know yet. And it's a very important thing for you as a history student to always realize that putting together the past is somewhat guesswork. We're doing the best that we can to put the puzzle pieces in place and we cannot get so tied to a theory about how something goes down that we don't see the thing over here that might tell us something else. It's, it's very important to always be open to new evidence. If you've got something that confirms your thought, like the Anderthal lady, cool. But don't ignore the 15,500 year old tools that are just up the street by Buttermilk Creek. Right, does that make sense? Okay. Oh, oh, y'all. They also found this woman in 2007, submerged in this underwater cave. There were some scuba divers. They went down there. Uh, they ended up calling this lady Naya after a Greek water nymph. And her body was really perfectly preserved. So they were able to actually reconstruct her face. So I'm gonna show you what one of the first Americans actually looked like. This is Naya, who died as a teenager. If you look at her face, you may or may not think that she has a lot in common with Native Americans, but she's been sequenced as ANSIC 1 was, 
And it's been shown that indeed she has 80% of all the markers for current Native Americans. So she was uh, related to Native American ancestors. It's just over years, the look of people evolved to this climate away from what people would have looked like in Siberia. Here's another rendition of Naya. She appeared on the cover of National Geographic in January of 2015. Of course, she wasn't the first American. We know that now because her body is only 12 to 13,000 years old. She is one of the oldest bodies ever discovered, however. And again, she shows that Native Americans of today do have a common Asian ancestor. Why do you think that human beings are so interested in origin stories? Why do we delve this far back into the past? Does it matter where Native Americans first came from? Does it matter where your ancestors first came from? Do you care? I don't know. Only you can answer that question. If you do, why? If you don't, why not? I'll see you later.